to find masks if you want. <laughs> Please join me in a call of worship. God's goodness. God's goodness is breaking into the world. We do not expect the spirit's movement. God gathers in those we judge to be outsiders. We witness the city breaking as healing, wholeness, restoration, and peace. Bill Dean is 375. <laughs>
Friends, hear the good news. It is the Lord who opens eyes to see. It is the Lord who softens hearts to hear. It is the Lord who returns us to God's presence. Peace, peace, peace. You are loved. You're enough. You belong. In Jesus Christ, you are restored. Thanks be to our God. mishap last week. Uh, so we're glad that Zoom is back up and working and we thank you for our patience, for your patience, as we navigate the ever updating technological world. Um, thank you for your grace and if you did miss worship last week and really want to catch Steve aka Thomas, it will be on YouTube soon. I think it's on Facebook. Um, on that note, also thank you all for giving me the opportunity for two different weeks this month to take uh, pastor study leave and then a vacation. It is not really good practice to go away for a week and then come back and then go awake again, but y'all rolled with it. Steve apparently was delightful and more got done last week, I think, without me here. It makes me wonder if perhaps, perhaps that should tell me something. So thank you truly for giving me the chance to Breathe some fresh air for a little bit. Announcements can be found on the back of your bulletin, and I want to draw your attention to the insert. Uh, we are doing our Easter, Easter Tide and Pentecost Bible study, much like we did the Lent Bible study. It will be Tuesdays at noon from Tuesdays at, from noon to one. And you can join either on Zoom, as you see, or right there in the coffee room. Uh, Dave Wasserman, our parish associate, has written little reflections for each week. And this year, we're, this year, this week, we're going to reflect on the text after we've shared it in worship. So you see here Dave's reflections on two stories we'll hear today. You'll have heard my sermon, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs medium, who knows. But I would love y'all to bring any reflections to this Bible study. And feel free to join online or in person. We're going to walk through the book of Acts and learn what we can from those early encounters of the early church. All are welcome. And if you can only make one week and not another, that's fine. Just come when you're able. <coughs> also on the back of the bulletin, I think someone mentioned this last week, but with the wildfires going on, we're in constant touch with the churches and members of our church who are in ready set and we only have some readies but go evacuation status several of y'all have expressed a desire to give and are don't really want to go through all the red tape on the Taos community foundation website so you're welcome to write a check to our church and write wildfires in the memo and that will be donated. It will be split between the Taos Community Foundation, we, who is providing relief to evacuees right now. And then when things settle down, Presbyterian Disaster Assistance will come in and we'll be doing a lot of rebuilding and support to churches in Mora, Chacon, Penasco, Las Vegas. So <coughs> we, will, we will divide your offerings in that way if you'd like to give through the church. 
And if you'd like to volunteer, there's a link there. Uh, any other announcements this morning? I see Mike, I know there's Z. So here comes, hello, hello. I can speak loudly too. Speak loudly and carry a medium sized stick. Yeah. Last week when I announced the new photography theme, water, I made a mistake on the date it was due. I said May 17th, well, that was wrong. The date is June 17th. And please send it by email to my email address and just put something in there that says photo in the, um, in the, uh, I think it was the name of the part we put down with the new emails out. It's not in the subject, maybe. So it's the theme is water, which is going to really test us all because you can't just turn on a spigot at the kitchen sink and fill a glass of water. We are being challenged this year, so I'm looking forward to the creativity of us all. And on the, by the 17th, send all your emails in, and I will do what I did in the past. Finally, I next week I will bring in the photographs we use for Lent. And I'll put them on the table there. So if you want your photograph back, um, it will be your way. Okay. Thank you, Mike. And if you haven't checked out the art exhibit for spring, please do. There's some beautiful and creative work there. You're welcome to unmask if you like. I just want to let everybody know that this is June. We're going to have cleanup day at Roma Verde again. Yeah, I say day and maybe days. <laughs> we have normally we have one day, but this year we have a lot of wind damage. Uh, then we the can't have trees fall on buildings, and so there's a lot of branches, a lot of slag. We were able to salvage the trees for lumber, but uh, we're going to need a lot of volunteers. Again, volunteer me as the work on the presentation. Volunteer, and I, I don't know. Thank you so much, Lee. Yes, Loma Verde Camp, a treasure of this community that we're trying to keep together. Any other announcements this morning? And are there any newcomers or visitors or folks who are back after a while that would like to introduce themselves? Yes. My name is Stacy, and this is my husband Gilbert, and we are just started building down in uh, San Diego Canyon, right on off of 522. And I am now here. We're, we're active members in our Presbyterian Church back in Dallas, where we live, and so I will now be here full time. And I'm looking forward to, to being here. And we're we're both very excited. We're very active in our church. Uh, Gilbert is going to stay uh, as an active elder because he'll be coming back and forth, but I'm going to go ahead and become a member. And uh, I was the mission and volunteer coordinator for the church there. Uh, I've got it. Apparently, I have until June 2nd to read the book for book club. <laughs> so <laughs> we're here and uh, we are very excited and we can't wait to serve you guys. Thank you, Stacey and Gilbert. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. <laughs> Is there anyone else? If we don't just say that to the mission volunteers, but we're also so, so <laughs> glad you're here for that reason. Is there anyone else who'd like to introduce themselves this morning? We are so glad that all of y'all are here. Uh, one last announcement is that in this era of hybrid worship, we are inviting folks who are on Zoom, if they don't really like being looked at for the whole sermon, uh, to, there, some folks are asking if they can turn their camera off, of course. You can also leave it on. We love seeing you. You're beautiful. Uh, but just, just to know if you choose to join us that way, um, that's something the worship committee would love folks to know that's A-OK. -okay. Are there any other announcements or shall we invite the children to come? Or the, the child, the one, the one, the one teenager who's going to humor me. Okay. 
And I see that your shirt says wanted, wanted baby Yoda. Awesome. Awesome. How's your week been? Great. Last night, um, we got to watch The Bella Father, but my mom said no pieces because I didn't want to see the animals now. <laughs> right. Good. Good. Yeah. You just watch The Godfather, but a few scenes, mom decided yeah, to skip. Which is yeah, I didn't want to see the animal buying scene because, like, we just watched Oh Brother, Where Art There, and I was like, oh my God. Oh. No, no, no. Those are hard. Those are really hard it's scenes. Not done, but it was really good. It was well, good. good. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, so today we're going to talk and hear about uh, a guy named Paul. Have you heard of Paul? Uh, which, which, Paul? which Paul? This is Paul in the New Testament. The, the, his name used to be Saul, and then he changed it to Paul, and then he went and he preached to a whole bunch of people. Oh, okay. He wrote a lot of letters. You might read his letters in the Bible. So we're going to talk about him and a woman named Lydia. Have you ever heard of Lydia? Um, no. no, no one's ever heard of. Have y'all ever heard of Lydia? Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, y'all are way more biblically literate than me. She didn't get mentioned much, but what she did is she sold purple cloth, which I kind of love because, well, it's my second favorite color, and it just, you know, it's just a little detail about her. So Paul and Lydia get to be friends, and. Uh, how do I say this? They're not really supposed to be friends. There's a lot of sort of rules in the, the world they're living in that say these two aren't supposed to hang out. Uh, like she's um, like in school, or it's like this. Oh, yeah, these kids are uh, like, well, I don't care. What? But you're popular, but you can't just hang out with this guy. It's just yeah. like that popular and unpopular. Or I bet you've heard about how there were times when black people and white people were, mm -hmm. or, uh, Gay people weren't supposed to be around that would be Jewish people, all those things. You know, we humans, we are predictable, aren't we? We always draw a line and say, yeah. I'm over here and you're over there. Yeah. But there's this really cool person who I, I like. She's a pastor up in Colorado, and she says, every time we draw a line, guess who ends up on the other side of the line from us? Um I don't know, people that started with me saying, you know, like, yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Right. Well, God always ends up on the other side. Uh -huh. If I ever draw a line and say, I'm right and you're wrong, God's always on the other side. Turns out I'm wrong. Yeah. Whoops. So, this is about some really unlikely friends. So, I'm wondering, can you think of one or two friends in your life that just are really special? Um, uh, well, Joey, they were in Riverdale. You got a lot of friends. What, um, yeah. what makes your friends so special? What is it that you just really like about them? Uh, I've known them for a long time and they're really funny and they're really fun, uh, fun to be with. So. Awesome. You've known them for a long time. They're really funny and they're really fun to be with. Those are great things. And it's not because they're on any side of this line or that line, uh, right? No, no, no. Like, oh, well, unless, well, unless, well, like, doing the race or something, really. Unless they're doing a race, <laughs> in which case we get behind the line and then we all take off. <laughs> Good call. Awesome. Well, I'm going to let you head off to Sunday school with Sam, but I'm glad that you have friends who are all different types of people yeah. and who are funny and fun. Yeah. And what is it we always say? The congregation says, May hey, God, God be with you. you. Yeah. We say, May God be with you. Thank you, Joey. I'd like to pray in the prayer of illumination as I read it. Calm us now, O Lord, into the quietness that heals and listens. Open wounded hearts to the balm of your word. Speak to us in clear tones so that we might feel our spirits leap for joy and skip with hope as your resurrection witnesses. Amen. Our first reading today is Acts chapter 16, verses 9 to 15. If you want to follow in your Bibles.
During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man in Macedonia pleading with him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia. Being convinced that God called us <clears throat> excuse me, to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail for Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace and the following day to Neapolis and from there to that Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her house were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of our God. Thanks be to God. The second reading, the psalm reading is Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7, page 529 in the Bible. <clears throat> the nations call to praise God. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. So long that your way be made known upon the earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yield, it yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. May God continue to bless us. Let all the ends of the earth be here. Good work, Mark. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The anthem this morning is, Will God show mercy to us? And it is Psalm 67. <laughs> Let all the nations see. 
Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Dan. It's one of my favorite cartoons. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from John's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 9. And if you're following along in your Pew Bible on page 96, you'll notice you read along to verse 3, and then it skips to verse 5. If you look down in the footnotes, you'll find other ancient authorities add holy or in part, <coughs> and then verse 4. This is what happens with ancient texts. They all vary a little bit. We're going to include verse 4 for this morning's reading. It's quite frankly, I like it. So listen now for what the Spirit is saying to the church. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool, called in Hebrew Bethzatha, or Bethsaida, or Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. Oh, I missed the part I said I'm going to read. Blind, blind, lame, and paralyzed, waiting for the stirring of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well from whatever disease that person had. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, stand up, take your mat, and walk. And at once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Paul and Lydia were not supposed to be friends. Paul is a Jew. Lydia is a Gentile. Paul is working class, he's a tent maker. And Lydia runs in the circles of high society. She sells purple cloth, a color made with expensive dyes and reserved only for those who can afford it. Paul is a male religious leader in a patriarchal tradition that has very strict rules about what women can and cannot do. Lydia is a powerful, feisty, single woman who in these six verses alone that, that Joanne read for us does two things that Paul's tradition says she shouldn't. She runs her own household and she starts a church. Paul is from Asia. Lydia is from Europe. These two are different in every way you can imagine. But when Paul meets Lydia at the riverside in Macedonia, Lydia believes the, the gospel that Paul preaches, and he baptizes her. Lydia implores him to stay at her house, and Paul and his companions cannot refuse such hospitality. 
So they stay, and the church in Philippi is born. A church that, if we read Paul's letter to the Philippians, that little four or five chapter epistle, we learn that this church that was founded in the text this morning is one of the healthiest and most joyful congregations in all of Paul's ministry. Boundaries are crossed at that river in Philippi. Friendships are formed where no one thought friendships could be. Paul and Lydia are not supposed to be friends, but that's what God's church is all about. God really makes this a pattern in the biblical narrative crossing boundaries that others say shouldn't be crossed, bringing together the most unlikely people so that only together can they find salvation. Take Moses. He's a Hebrew boy who, by Pharaoh's edict, is supposed to be killed and thrown down the river. But Moses is drawn out of that river by Pharaoh's own daughter, and before he goes on to set his people free, he will be raised and find family in Pharaoh's own household. Or take Ruth and Naomi. Naomi is a respected Hebrew matriarch. Ruth, her daughter-in-law, comes from an enemy of the Hebrew people, the Moabites. But it is the clever conniving of these two widows that leads to the birth of Israel's great King David. And then there's Jesus. Oh, Jesus loves nothing more than forging unlikely friendships that might make people uncomfortable. He is a Jewish rabbi who spends his time with sex workers and Samaritans. His disciples include both fishermen and those loathed tax collectors, both upstanding Roman citizens and members of the often violent political extremist groups like the Zealots and the Sicarios. By the time we get to the book of Acts, the Holy Spirit has entered the picture and she is at work mixing the Jews and Gentiles like their sugar, flour, and butter. She is always directing Paul and his companions away from where they thought they'd go. And in dreams like we heard this morning, to new and unlikely places like Philippi and Macedonia. She leads Paul down to the riverside where an unlikely friendship between Paul and Lydia starts an unlikely church that will grow into a community of prayer and faithfulness and justice and love and joy. Some 2,000 odd years later, we, the First Presbyterian Church of Taos, New Mexico, live in a very different world than Moses, or Jesus, or Paul. We live in what people are calling the postmodern, post-Christian, post-institutional age, where those of us who make the choice to gather every week and do this thing called organized religion are a minority, more and more so as People find institutions like the church irrelevant to their lives. These days, we as people have the freedom to be spiritual without being strictly religious. And we are able to serve our neighbors in ways that are not governed, overseen, or dictated by the church. And you know, thanks be to God for that, that we stop trying to enclose God's grace within these four walls. But still we come here 
and we do this thing called church because we know that without the church, Paul and Lydia would never have been friends. People love to tell pastors why they do or don't go to church. This is partly why I never tell people on an airplane what I do. <laughs> and here in Taos, the one I hear most often is, oh, you know, I don't really need religion. I find God in the mountains. Do y'all hear that one a lot? And you know, it's great. I find God in the mountains too. But I ask you, in the mountains, do you ever sit down and share a meal with someone who votes differently than you do? Do you ever hold hands with someone from a different race or a different socioeconomic status? In our increasingly divided and polarized society, Church is one of those few places where we don't get to pick our friends, where we stand shoulder to shoulder with people with whom we otherwise may never spend time. This is a place where we offer prayer and casseroles to people that quite honestly we may not like today, but we've committed to love them. The church is a place where it is not us, but Christ who sets the table and opens the doors, which is a really good thing because Paul and Lydia both might have preferred to shut the door in the other's face. Church gives us a place to practice crossing those boundaries that separate us from one another. For it is only by crossing those boundaries that we learn to cross the boundary that separates us from God. Years ago, when I lived in Peru, I heard an interpretation of this morning's gospel reading, and it changed the whole story for me. And it all hinged on that little left out, verse 4, where we hear about a local legend that an angel of the Lord from time to time would come down to the pool at Bethesda and stir the waters, and whoever entered first would be healed. So, as we heard, people with all sorts of ailments gathered by this pool and waited for a visitation. And when the waters were troubled, they would race down to be first to the pool. Some even had family members and friends and entourages who stood by and waited with them to carry them to the pool if they couldn't make it on their own. <coughs> This community of the sick became about survival of the fittest or the fastest or the one with the strongest friends. Because of all those who needed healing at the water's edge, only one of them could receive it each time the waters were stirred. Pastor Eduardo in Peru told us that as he meditated on this passage of scripture, he started to wonder, why? Why could only one person be healed at a time? Is it possible that this story of individualism and competition is not the only way for this to end? Eduardo asked us to imagine what might happen if all the people hoping and waiting for healing at the pool of Bethesda decided to work together and join forces when the angels stir the waters, what if they joined hands, reached arms around shoulders, and helped each other down to the water's edge? 
What if, after the angels stirred the pool, they all took that first step into the pool together? Wouldn't they all be healed? Why are we reading this story of miraculous healing with such a scarcity mentality? When did we start to believe that the God who created the heavens and the earth, the one who turned chaos into order, made light out of darkness, only has the power to heal one of us at a time? Jesus asks the paralyzed man, do you want to be made well? We do want to be made well, don't we? And if we do, if we want to find healing, wholeness, salvation, if what we seek is to cross that holy line between we who are human and the one who is divine, friends, I think the only way we can do it is hand in hand with one another. Hand in hand with the people we disagree with. People who look or talk or love or worship differently than we do. Hand in hand, even with our enemies. Paul and Lydia are not supposed to be friends. Hey, maybe you and I aren't supposed to be friends either. But here we are. Thanks be to God. <coughs> friends, I invite you to rise in body, spirit, or both and join us in hymn number 435. There's a wideness in God's works. <laughs> Colleen and Amy Jo and Colin.
We share signs and words of peace with all in this room, with all on Zoom, and I'll attempt to give you the Facebook litany of those worshiping from afar. Peace from and to Creed Chavez, Boyd Mary Beth Earl, Sandra and Randy Phillips, Tina and Francis Trujillo, Carol White, Kirk and Mindy Buchanan. Peace to all far and near. Friends, having shared Christ's peace, let us now come before God in prayer. Gracious God of all creation, you have made the world and all that is in it, and you have called it and us good. So we pray for your world and your people, for creation groaning under the pangs of climate change, God, we pray for rain, rest, and healing. For a church that seeks to be faithful, even here, even now, we pray that you'd empower us, and give us grace and strength. God, we pray for our community, for the joyful sounds next door at the Lilac Festival accompanying our, fairs, our, our prayers, and for the people in this room, in this community, and beyond. In a time of fire, we pray for our Presbyterian Hikarita Cluster siblings, for those in Mora and Chacon and Las Vegas, for folks in Penasco, <coughs> for all who are waiting to see what this fire might mean for their church and their community. God, we thank you for all that you have given us in our lives, for all things good. We pray for our friends and family and for those that we don't even know. Thank you for bringing us together Heal us where we are sick or hard of heart. Comfort us where we are grieving or afraid. Walk with us in this time. God, we pray especially this morning for the Taiwanese Presbyterian community after a horrific shooting in the church in California. God, you bring us together with people we might never otherwise know. So keep bringing us together for prayer, fellowship, and worship, and service. And now, oh God, in silence and aloud, we lift up the joys and the concerns on our hearts this morning. Friends, for whom and for what do we pray? For the Ukrainian soldiers for the that have been taken prisoner by for the Ukrainian soldiers taken prisoner at Maripol, God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Prayers for Dave Wasserman and his neighbor, my friend Mary Pinson, and all those in harm's way from the fire. Prayers for Dave Wasserman and for Mary and others in harm's way from the fire, particularly in our community. We also lift up the Cardinus family and Julia Armstrong in the ready zone. Prayers for Carol and Jim White, that they come home safely from their travels. God, in your mercy. For those fighting cancer, um, Alexa McQueen is on her last bout of chemo, and I had to go visit with her mom, and she's doing well. Thanks. For all those fighting cancer, including Alexa McQueen, and those among us, Francis Trujillo, Colin McFadgen, any others who may, may want to speak or not speak those words for those fighting cancer. For those who are dying from cancer, my dear friend Paula has been given two to three months and the hope is gone. 
for Amy Joe's friend Paula and her last <coughs> mother. May there be healing and may there be some semblance of hope. God in your mercy. For Gwen Oliver and for Dick and all their family, and with the joy of visits, the opportunity to be together. God in your mercy. For all of the first responders that have come from far away to help our community fight the fires, we can save as well as the aviation community that is responding to the fire. For the first responders, the firefighters, and the aviation community helping to keep us and our beloved neighbors safe, God in your mercy. For the people fighting tornadoes in Oklahoma and in the Kansas area at this time. People fighting tornadoes in Oklahoma and Kansas, and I believe also Michigan. God in your mercy. Prayers for our kids and especially for our beloved children. God in your mercy. We pray all these things, O oh God, words spoken and words unspoken. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Grand Scott has blessed us with so much. So let us now give back a portion of that blessing as we receive the morning call. are many. We just need to look around us and see the miracles and state that you perform in our lives. For those in need, for those who have abundance, let us know that the gifts of our hands to your 
in this world are ours to use and the money that we give and the gifts we give to help in other ways are all for me. Thank you for Friends, join us in our final hymn, number 295, Go to the World.